Let's welcome everybody in. March 25th, the Monday. We're inching ever so closer to the Stanley Cup playoffs. What, four weeks? Yes. Maybe? Yes. We're getting there now. April 17th is the Leafs' last game. Today is March 25th, so we're getting there. That's the voice of Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee, Derek Brandeo, and James Wilson. Wilson! Wilson! Jim- <laughs> Jimmy Willie. That's a good Wilson. Good Wilson, Wilson. call. Nick Kiprios. We are live and in color on Sportsnet 590, Sportsnet 360, Sportsnet Plus from 4 to 6. And download us when you can't catch us live on your favorite pod. And text us 590-590. We'll probably get to them as much as we would on Off the Rails Friday. But if they're good, Sammy's waiting. To catch Sammy's I, attention. I watched so much sports this weekend. Just a sickening amount of sports. Is that so unusual for you? Give us the heads. No. <laughs> I, just, I just watch. It's all I do. Yeah. So watch sports. How fast did you leave Friday to get to your Owen? Oh, that was on Thursday. That was Thursday? Yeah, How, I went out like, there. So I got there with five minutes left in the first period. Yeah. So that was fine. So I watched the whole game. They lost that game, the attack. They did. And, and, then, did they and, then, on, and then yesterday, on sorry, on Saturday, they needed a win to get to 30 for the 13th straight year, which only the London Knights have ever done in CHL history. And they blew a, th- a two-goal three a third period lead and lost in overtime and didn't get to the record. Sitting on 29 wins. Sitting on 29 rin- wins. Devastating. At least we didn't draw London in the first round. So, oh, okay. no, it's Saginaw in the first round, who's also probably going to end no. things quickly. No. But at least it's not London. At least I don't have to have all of Leafs Nation pulling up clips of Easton Cowan going uh, globetrotter on my, <laughs> on my beloved attack. So that's good. But, right. yeah. but then, I mean, the March Madness. Mackenzie Hughes was in the mix at the Valspar for a little while there. Canada Soccer had a big game. TFC, Toronto Maple Leafs. Huge. Buddy, I was just... Your wife must be disgusted by you. Buddy, my, my wife doesn't even like hanging out with me. Like, I, she has plans. She goes with her friends. I'm just like, sports time again. <laughs> and you, you just like, recently got married. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just wait 25 years from yeah. now. Oh. See how that relationship yeah, works out. We'll see. Anyways, it's a great weekend, boys. We, uh, we left Friday's show really, I don't know if, if we built it up. The Saturday night game against yeah, Toronto man. and Edmonton, and we're going to break down everything that happened on the weekend. But mm. did it did it hold what you thought it would be in terms of a, a measuring stick? Because listen, I know we did the game last night. We know that the Leafs lost, uh, but I got to tell you, ov- overall for the weekend, I, I didn't think it was a bad weekend at all for the Toronto Maple Leafs. No, no, not at all, not at all. I mean. You can't say it's only a measuring stick game when you lose, you know, like mm-hmm. when you go out there and you measure up well and you're with, you know, missing some important pieces. There is more times now where I'm watching the Leafs play where I like things beyond just the core, which is a little unusual. You know, earlier in the season, there's a lot of fuss about how they score 60% of the team's goals. It's down to 50. There's more to like right now about pretty, these Toronto Maple Leafs. Pretty, pretty Pretty good. I, okay, I want to be careful here. Oh, boy. But I definitely feel a lot more optimistic about the Toronto Maple Leafs today than I would have told you I feel like heading into the weekend. Like, I'm not all the way there, but I do feel like those are two. I mean, the Sunday night, it's clearly, last night's clearly a bit of a scheduled loss. There's a lot of things not to like, but you see Joel Wall's performance in that game that gets you dreaming. The game against the, the their sort of pseudo rivals, but they're not a, obviously conference rival or whatever. But he just played so well in that game for most of it. I, I don't know. It just I agree with you, Kipper. It was a good feeling weekend, and the Oilers thing. I know we're gonna get a lot more of this in the National Hour, but if you you can't say that you think the Oilers are gonna win the cup and say that the Leafs can't win the cup, okay? I I think they are way more similar than people give them credit, and I you know like it's. It. Everyone always like all the big contending Oilers and the crappy little Leafs that can never win anything. It's like, oh, they're pretty similar to me. They prior to Saturday night, I don't know the exact record, but the Oilers were at thirty nine and nine, I think. They've been hot for sure. Oh no, that's not hot. That's they've been hot. That's really good. That's yeah, I'm just saying. But I'm not going to completely dismiss your thought process that the Oilers maybe on the weekend it showed that they're less than perfect, mm-hmm. right? We saw some some holes this weekend from the Edmonton Oilers. 
and and the Leafs have made some traction here, yeah. either through the trade deadline. Edmondson, as we saw Saturday night, helped give them a, a better look, one that Brad Tree Living was hoping for. Didn't get the perfect, probably, trade deadline for himself, but he got bigger, he got tougher, Chopped. and it showed Saturday night. Yeah, I would say that was Saturday's storyline. I think a lot of people... You know, you don't overstate that or whatever, but it was unique to see the Toronto Maple Leafs take it to another team's group of stars. This is cross checking. <laughs> yeah, there was <laughs> lots. That's a great drop. It, there was a lot of that out of the Leafs, and obviously getting dry saddle off his game was a you know a nice uh, nice play from Edmondson. Frustrated Darnell Nurse at some point too, um, and then you get Bobby McMahon scores a couple. Pontus Holmberg scores a couple, and it just feels like there's pieces, and it hasn't all come together. You know, that game, it came together very well. We haven't seen exactly what it's going to look like with a healthy Marner and a healthy Yarncroc and all these other pieces contributing, but you can definitely dream on a lineup now. You're like, all right. Yeah, I, that's part of it that's impressive too. Like they did it on they did it on Saturday night without Marner, mm-hmm. without Yarncroc, without Labushkin, right? Did he play Saturday? Or no, he did no, play. He was uh, out on Sunday. Bertuzzi was out on Saturday. He played last night. Right. Uh, they didn't have TJ Brody for you know their own choice, but he's supposed to be one of their best guys. Mm. And you go out there and you smoke one of the quote unquote contenders in the NHL. So, okay, let's go to Sheldon Keith with his thoughts Saturday night, facing the fire power of the Edmonton Oilers. I, I thought that uh, I thought we, our guys just competed hard tonight. You know, I, I thought we played with lots of attitude. Um, you know, I really thought that. Our defense, you know, in particular, Edmondson and McCabe, I thought really set the tone for our team here tonight. Uh, just how they competed. And our penalty kill gave us life in, in, the, in the game. And in that first period, special teams, you know, we've been talking lots about that. And I'm sure it'll come up again here as the third period. But we're, we're not in the position that we are. We don't get it done uh, in the first period this, with the kills, especially the first one. Hey, listen, we've covered a lot of Leaf games in the last three years, and I I can't recall seeing a game like Saturday nights where you saw Leaf players targeting the opponent's best players. And I'm talking the best in the world in Connor McDavid. Like, they went after him. There's no second thoughts from Joel Edmondson in terms of pushing, shoving, giving it to Connor, not thinking about repercussions not looking over his shoulders like i thought it was fantastic it, turn your mic on you like that piece I, oh yeah. i'm like how refreshing is that for a leaf fan yeah it's funny too because you know i i don't think anyone looks at edmonton and goes and goes this guy is you know unbelievable he's gonna be this that or the other thing in the playoffs but if he's that kills penalties and makes people mad and throws some extra cross checks it's nice. It's nice that the Leafs could have a back end that could at least make some forwards go, God, my ribs hurt today. Yeah. Maybe I don't want to stand in front of the net. Like, I think last year, Dubas brought in Shen, and Shen was a awesome player for the Leafs. And I loved him and, you know, yeah. made the Luke's Troops joke, and I, I was one of the guys. I loved him. Yeah. But I don't think he is outright dirty like Edmondson is. Yeah. Edmondson, to me just feels like a dirty hockey player and i love it like it's not like i'm saying that in a negative way yeah. like he that was just abuse on dry sidle i'm that, thrilled that one of the that Dry's one of the court and he just hammers them twice they get in the like there's a full-on donny brook with all the stars on the ice like and he's involved he's the guy at the top of it I gotta say, he's winning Leaf fans over. He is he is quickly becoming a fan favorite with Leaf what Nation. Let's go to clip f- uh, four on Edmondson and McCabe. Edmondson won. Uh, McCabe had one, I think, on Kane uh, as well. But ju- just it was it wasn't even just the contacts. It, it was the the level of competitiveness on the puck, like the battles uh, to come up with the pucks. A lot of that on the penalty kill, uh, face off scrums, all those kind of things where we're coming up with pucks, and that's. That's what we need. We're, you know, when we make those decisions to play that way and compete like that, uh, you know, we're hard. We're a hard team to beat, and we're, and we're capable of great things. Oh, it changes the complete dynamics of the Leafs for me. Mm-hmm. If if that level of consistency can hold, yeah. And you know, I, I don't see any reason it can't. What I do like, Kip, is like 
you know, they had Brody out um, for a couple games in a row there, and you didn't feel like there was a guy in the lineup who can't play in the league. And so I think that means in playoffs, if anyone is struggling, you feel like they can go to their seventh guy and even their eighth guy and pretty, you know, still feel the decor that is pretty, pretty acceptable. I know they don't have who Colorado has or Vegas has or even Carolina has at the top end of the back end, but they're, you know, they got a lot of fives, <laughs> you know, a lot of guys who are physical fives. And I think that at least if they can keep it simple, you can see a world where they can get the puck out enough to help the forwards. Absolutely. Like, and it's just, you know, that was a huge game on Saturday night. And with all the buildup with what, you know, the talking about Zach Hyman. So Willie Nylander say that he's not getting it tonight. Like that might as well be the Messier guarantee from him. He's never said anything interesting. That was like, a competitive thing like, to oh say. Oh my God, I can't believe he said that. Like it was nothing basically. But yeah. I just, for them to come out and respond like that in a game like that, that's what playoff games are like. They have a ton of buildup. They have a game where like you look forward to it and everybody talks about it and it's a big event and you come out and play that greasy and that aggressive and that well yeah. makes you feel yeah. good. It does. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to get, uh, I'm going to get your thoughts on Holmberg and McMahon, but, uh, and I, I, I mentioned this on you the might show. You right about McMahon. Wow, listen. <laughs> Just hold on for a second. I, I, I said this on the telecast last night. We covered uh, Caroline and the Leafs and, uh, Max Domi passes the belt, could have easily given it to Holmberg or McMahon for their multiple goals, but he, he hands it to Edmondson. And that's the one thing about Max is that, you know what stood out for Max for me in the last month, month and a half, is everything he says, everything he does is kind of inclusive. Like it's all about bringing the guys in, saying the right things to bring in that closeness, that competitiveness yeah. that we're that that the team needs moving forward. I, I, maybe maybe it's so noticeable because it's been lacking yeah. all these years and not that you know, I mean we can look at the the leadership group in many ways and there's some things that we've liked in the past from this group and there's some things that we haven't liked, but this guy is consistent in his message sending everything isn't about me or i it's we or i don't have a discussion with you at all no and you know what i said this to you yesterday that it feels like he's the bridge between team a and team b like mm. it's it's almost like you know matthews and him are pals sounds like they like hang out at the back of the plane and you know do their thing they have a relationship they seem to like play need to with each other matthews passes it to him he passes to him a lot a lot you know, so it feels like they've, like, welcomed this other guy into their team. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, with the way McMahon's rolling, who they also seem to really like, and Holmberg Matthews calls him his favorite player at time, mm -hmm. you know, and Marner did too. It almost feels like you can kind of, it feels like there's more connection between the groups and you're not just a team of four guys. And I think Max deserves a lot of yeah. credit for being the first guy to sort of create that bridge. What would you think about his fight? He punched Isn't that guy that the Everything he lot. does keeps me... <laughs> At the edge of my seat. Yeah. Earlier in the season, it might have been a turnover. <laughs> yeah, but he's right. limited those. He has. He's making better decisions. Yeah. And everything out there, he's got that edge that yeah. I don't know. He could make an amazing pass. He could get into a fight. He could have a long conversation with somebody that ends with a lot of FUs. I mean, whatever the case is. He could still have a whoopsie doodle with the puck. He can do a lot of stuff that gets, uh, gets your attention. quite unpredictable. Yeah. And I like that. Well, better predictability in a positive way For in sure. the last two, three weeks, Sammy. No, I just, no. no, I just mean like unpredictable in terms of a good play, a fight. Yeah. Listen, somebody you, were, to the you were the one before the season started that said, I, I, you, you mentioned he was going to be a fan favorite, but the okay. other thing you said is, how long before he gets suspended? Yeah, the wires cross. <laughs> the wires cross. You know what's really interesting is uh, we had a board yesterday, and I don't have the exact stat with me, but Domi is like fifth in the NHL oh, yeah. in five-on-five -five primary assists. It's like I can David, McKinnon, like it's it. the big dogs, and then Max is right there. So um, Here you know, his direct setup to Holmberg is a great I player. have it. It's yeah, yeah. Number one is McDavid with 48, two Kucherov, 39, uh, Nathan McKinnon, three, Leon Dreisaitl, Tim Stutzla, Max Domi tied with Quinn Hughes with yeah. five with for five on five assists this season. You know, he, and he hasn't had a ton of power well, he play. He doesn't get to play all, on the power play. All, right. So all, all his yeah. creation, it's like Alex Kerfoot when he was getting points, you know, it's 
Is there any part of a different element? Is there any part of Sheldon Keefe when Domi fought that he wasn't just happy for him firing up the crowd that he didn't have to put him out there with in the, a suddenly two goal lead? Yeah, <laughs> you have to put him, to put him in the D zone. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. All right, before we get your thoughts on Holmberg and McMahon, positive. let's go to Sheldon Keefe's on clip three. Both guys were, you know, were terrific tonight. Uh, obviously, I, I, I felt Holmberg, you know, had some good things going on, which is why I moved him up to play with, play with Austin, and that paid dividends right away. Um, but uh, he was just good all game, and second goal is another, another great goal and great finish by him. Bobby's, you know, as we know, has been excellent here, and and, uh, you know, he's, he finishes some great plays uh, again tonight. But I thought, throughout the lineup, I just thought we had great efforts. Yeah. Um, the McMahon thing is, is fascinating. He's up to 13 goals. I want to say 11 in the past couple months. McJesus. His, like, in goals four per 60 on the Leafs, it's Matthews, McMahon, <laughs> Nylander, I think. Like, he's, he's throwing it in the net a lot here. Yeah. <laughs> is this a flash in the pan type of thing or how how much can they use this guy up the lineup? Right now, a lot. Yeah. Listen, it, there is something called a sophomore jinx. Yeah. I mean, at some point he's going to cool off and I don't know what this means moving forward, but right now he's feeling it. The juice is good, eh? <laughs> There's an expectation from him now that it's no longer of if I can do it, but when I'm going to do it. Yeah. When he's out on the ice. What are you all giggles about? You think I'm... I just, I think you're going to bring it up and be like, what a horrible contract. No, 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 no. Listen, I, it's just, it's a side note, okay? It's not I, a major story here. I'm starting to come over to your side. He looks like, I mean, he obviously will have cooled down, but I think something flipped for him Listen, in terms of confidence. There's, there's only upside. Yes. It's not. Buddy, Pierre Engvall just I got think, seven times three. I think the Leafs. Who would you rather have at that? Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I think I think the Leafs told him he was a restricted free agent. I think <laughs> that's what it. happened. Yeah. <laughs> my stuff. Yeah. But only upside, like Mason Marchment. If I would have told you Mason Marchment was going to make $4 million one day, you guys would have looked at me like I had three heads. Yeah. Yes. I right. would have done that. Agree. Okay? Yeah. Like, there, But there's only upside for these guys that just kind of can hold it but hey he wanted the security brad tree living could could sense that or smell that and say hey here it is guaranteed one, one way, way buddy take it yeah. and he did so that's on him smart move forward here and yeah he didn't take a five-year deal at the, that the, number the, the best the best uh, scenario for Leaf fans is if this guy really regrets signing this. Yeah, of course. You'd mm -hmm. love that. You'd right? love a lot of regret. So, but <laughs> is, they're, they're such key guys. Holmberg and McMahon, I wrote this in my article on in the Toronto Star last week, that, like, they won't go anywhere without them. Yeah. They have to be that secondary group of guys that gets hot at the right time that we, I don't know, Call him an unsung hero. You want to yeah. get past the first round and maybe make some noise to a conference final? These guys have to be yeah. it. But I've said this for years, that down your lineup, give me 27-year-olds, yeah. like prime age guys who work and are trying to prove something, whatever. Joe Thornton ain't it or Jason Spezza or, you know, whatever hangers on you still have. You can't have a bunch of rookies. I understand these guys are technically rookies, but they're not young rookies. They're not... 21 year olds breaking into the league they've been playing pro hockey you know holmberg included has been playing overseas i love where they're at in the lineup and and i feel like you could get a pop in a game i never felt like the leafs could get pop in a game it's a different down there it's a different strategy like like we always talk about team a and team b this is definitely a very different strategy for team b than they've had in well, years it's past it's not a strategy you well, just painted in a corner they're, well, I, they're, they're they're there because you had no other options but to get low-paying guys and you try to maximize when you can lean on them the most. The good news is, to JB's point, is they're not 22 or 23, still green. They've got some seasoning, mm. but unfortunately, it's not NHL playoff seasoning. They've never played before. Mm -hmm. the only thing but it's you not can... going to be up to them the way it's up to the core, who has been through it. Yes, it is, but... It's can they remain a little calm mm -hmm. when it gets a little bit 
You're right. Dicey in the playoffs. Just it's, play defense until you, you something happens. You cannot replicate the next 12 games for them mm-hmm. like you can what they're going to feel in a Stanley Cup no. best of seven series when things are constantly on the line. But I like the fact that he keeps going to them. He puts them in key situations. So there might be a level of expectation that they can just slide right into a, a playoff series and say, hey, you killed the penalty uh, two weeks ago. You were, you were great. There's no reason why you can't be great in this environment. But that's that's the tricky part is you're still asking guys that have never done it before mm. to go out there and and lead in many yeah. ways. Is there is there any part of it where they are, like the inexperience could be somewhat of an advantage? where it's like they're not feeling the scars of years past and they're kind of right. the young and dumb aspect. Like, I've always heard that argument because is that stupid? I think it's a great argument. Like, I, I don't know. If you're going into the playoffs and you're like a guy that knows, well, they all know the history of the Leafs in the playoffs. So they're not Nothing like, to lose. But it's just, to me, they don't wear the scars of yeah. years past. And they're not brought in at the deadline with the pressures of being traded for a first-round pick to Toronto as saviors. They're just guys that are... Supporting, I don't know. Yeah, sort of be so positive today, but that's just you know that's what I'm going for. Nice. I think it it probably lends to who who's the real leaders there, and we know it has yeah. to be Matthews and, and Marner. Do they have any scars? I can't remember. And Tavares, <laughs> yeah, they, they are a scar. <laughs> They're a human scar. <laughs> yeah. I can only go from the fact that in 1994 we we'd gone 54 years. You look around the room, and there's some failures there, and then every once in a while you you heard something from Kevin Lowe, and it's like. You can exhale. This guy's done it. He's won before. Messier's won before. We had a a room full of Edmonton Oilers that have won before. When they tell you to calm down, you believe them, right? They need Joel Edmondson to pipe up. Stanley Cup champion Joel Edmondson. You know, are are Matthews and Marner and Tavares ready now if, if, if things get a little hairy that their voices can carry in the dressing room? Okay, they don't have a ton of experience, but they've got some thicker skin. And if yep. they can lead the way, then it'll still be easier for McMahon and, and mm-hmm. Holmberg and company to trust them. Yep. Yeah. Like, you played, earn the Stanley eight, Cup. That's eight. the only way you win. Yeah, they've played eight playoff rounds now, those guys. You would expect uh, some experience. The uh, The other crazy thing to me is, like, you're keeping McMahon and Holmberg in the lineup. You know, they had 12 forwards the other night. Marner's got to go in. Yarn Crocs got to go in. Reeves was out and could conceivably go in. Yeah, they sat him both games against Carolina. I think for there's no one there for him to. And I mean, he's just, they're just blindingly fast. fast yeah. Game. So, but the point is that like guys got to come out, and so McMahon and Holmberg played their way in. Robertson scores a goal the other night, but yeah. he's awful. Yeah. I mean, I thought he had a bad game. He did. You know, so curious to know what their playoff looks uh, lineup looks like. I just don't see him. He's a few guys out of the lineup to me. Before we see him. And I think they probably would take Gregor out before they'd take Nyes out. But to me, oh, that's, yeah. to me, it should be more of a conversation than it will be, I think. Yeah, Nyes hasn't been great, has he? Okay. What have we gone? 23 minutes. We haven't mentioned. Carolina? No. <laughs> Goalies. Elia. Oh, my Samsonov, God. Samsonov. Oh, my God. Who's done a great job <laughs> of building up some cred between All-Star Weekend mm-hmm. and Saturday night with about, what, six minutes left in the third period. What was that? What was that? What was that? Can someone explain it to me? He armed his arm a bit, and then it got armed, and he was... I, <laughs> I don't know. His arm hurt. I, I it, don't know. It's two times in the last two weeks where he left the ice, won at practice, wondering game where I thought his career was over. But this happened last year 10 times. It happens a lot. And it happened in the second round. And I think it annoys Sheldon Keefe, by the way, when would, asked about would it. Would you like to hear the clip? Yes, if we have something. We do have amazing. it. It's clip one. Looks like he's going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> happened? I do. Yes. What happened? <laughs> he got injured. And it's not, uh, it's not anything near what it appeared or what I thought it, it, it might have been. I'm not going to give you too many details right now, but it looks like he'll be he'll be fine and won't miss any time. I, okay, I got that's to... as polite as you can get without saying, I have no idea what's going on with him. He's fine. Looks how like he's he... going to be fine. Yeah. How is he fine? 
you should have to say you're not fine when you when when you when you when you're basically telling everybody that like the injury and the pictures that we all saw together are like night and day apart night and day i don't know was there something more drastic uh, I like know. i don't know hemisphere <laughs> away so i think the, the the implication we're all beating on the bushes he tends to be dramatic about tweaks fair yeah. boy who cried wolf no, a little bit I, I, it's it's now well beyond that jb it's can we count on him when the chips are down that he won't disappear? That's what the players are asking themselves. So you think each other. it gives him an out if things aren't? I don't know. I, like, listen, and we had this conversation last night on the show, and like, I'm not, I'm not questioning if he's hurt or not, or if he's, he's faking. That's hurt. him. Something, hurt. Something bothered him, yes. but it's now about like how durable can he be when you need him and where's his break point for saying i can hang in here i will battle this i won't let you guys down i'm going to do everything that i can and if they're going to carry me out it's not to hear my coach 15 minute, minutes later go call me out that's all sheldon did in that that clip we just heard, he called out his own, own goaltender. It's not what it appears. It's like your stupid rearview mirror in your car. Well, what's he supposed to say, Kippy? Who, Sheldon? Yeah. He's hurt? We'll no. reevaluate him? No. No, I, I, in all honesty, I think because we've seen this movie so many yeah, times, yeah. Yeah. Sheldon did the appropriate thing. Agree. Yeah. Because if, he, if, he's, if he's not honest, a little bit honest now, then he puts it off for tomorrow, the next day, the next day. No, yeah. just tell them it's it's not that bad. You know, and teams do make assessments on players based on their likelihood of injury. Like, there's no doubt that teams were worried, Arizona, about Connor Timmons' ability to stay healthy. Yep. You know, there are players where you go, I don't know if that guy is... Look what Colorado just did with Bowen Byram. Yeah, that's a, they didn't think he's a bad no. player. They're betting against, I tell you what happened, the Leafs bet against the guy you mentioned, mentioned, Mason Marchman. They didn't think he could stay healthy. That's why they traded him. So it happens, and so it's reasonable to, to suggest a team is looking at a guy on their own team going, we're not sure if this guy's going to be available to us. And if you're the coach, I don't know if this there's any credence to this, but if you're starting a guy in a playoff game, like and sh and Ilya Samsonov is one hundred percent in the conversation to start game one. Like that is yeah. not over by any stretch. Have that. But I mean, you're not going to be thinking about this in the back of your mind that like he's leaving a game and you're going to have to throw Joe Wall ice cold into a big game because he left for I don't know what reason. Like how does that not play into your mind when you're making your decisions? I do think if playoffs started tonight, Ilya Samsonov starts. Not my choice. I Even think they would start if him. he starts. You have now that seed of doubt, okay? Exactly. And that's not a good thing for the bench or any Leaf fan out there that after every save, does he get up right away? Mm -hmm. Does he take 10 seconds, 5 seconds? Are there theatrics on him, the way he looks, the body language? Every time that happens, it takes the focus off the team and it puts it on him and... I'm not sure if you want to start that way either, JB. Mm -hmm. So you'd like to think that with a dozen games to go, there's still plenty more to fight for if you're goaltenders. Oh, yeah. But I think he he opened up a window Saturday night. He opens for a window Wall. up, and then Wall pitches for, a for Joseph 948 Wall to come or whatever he was. Right back in and steal his net. I, I think you're bang on. Yeah. Like, it's it's true. And then have Wool go out. And you got to think that the way Wool played yesterday, he felt it. Like, he, I mean, I didn't love the first goal, I'll say. But then he, you know, the second one, he can't do anything. Then he just locked in. Yeah, He, he made, was unbelievable. Was odd man rushes all night. And he's a competitive guy. He wants to be the starter. He wants to start the playoffs. How can you not love that yeah. if you're the coach and make you want to start him more than the other guy? Anyways. All up in the air still. Very much up in the air. Okay, we'll take a quick break yep. here, and we come back. We'll pick up our conversation on Joseph Wall and his efforts last night against Carolina, including uh, uh, a tough start, but uh, 
finished rather strongly for the Toronto Maple Leafs, so plenty still more to chew on uh, regarding the Toronto Maple Leafs. On the Real Kipper and Bourne Show, we're just getting started. Don't go away. Frederick Anderson stopped 31 shots last night for a sixth straight victory as the mm. Hurricanes topped Sammy's Toronto Maple Leafs. Mm. Sammy? Yes, Kippy. Did you not watch last night's game and think, Freddie's going to blow it? Yeah. Freddie's going to blow it. For my narrative tra- for my narrative train, I was praying for it, of course, and for my beloved Toronto Maple Leafs, I was hoping. But If he was in a Leaf uniform and that was a playoff game, would he have blown it? Yes. Um, <laughs> unequivocally, yes. That I, took you all but a split second to answer. I will say, when he's on, there are a few more aesthetically pleasing goaltenders in the yeah, league than he him. He was good. Big and... Well, he was flopping around a couple times. A couple, couple pucks, times. A couple pucks kind of got in behind him a little bit that didn't end up in the net, but... Yeah, I, I mean, we can have a quick conversation on Carolina here before we move on to more Leaf stuff. But to me, they are, I, they. if I had to set the, the betting lines, to me, they are pro- close to a prohibitive favorite to win the Cup. I, you know, you know, there's a couple teams in the West. You can talk about, I guess, uh, Colorado or whoever you want. But, man, the way they snap it around, they are impressive. They have a lot of forwards, a lot of forward depth. Very good uh, defense. If their goaltending holds, they're going to be tough to beat. They're not particularly tough, no. which you may say is uh, a playoff question mark. But I just thought the Leafs on a back-to-back with travel, with Carolina rested, getting to the inside, like to in front of Freddie. You know, there's no uncontested looks. It was and you guys a lot brought, of traffic. You guys got brought it up a little bit during the intermission, especially Kipper with the with the Nylander play. But it felt like so many times, and then probably a lot of tired brain that they would get to like the half wall. And they just throw a pass into the middle because they just, they be couldn't like, yeah. get to the middle at all, and they're just like, please let this connect yeah. with somebody. For sure, uh, saw that too. A couple of feelings I had from last night's contest was number one, another feel back to back nights yeah. of of kind of playoff in, intensity. So the physicality that you had out of uh, out of Edmonton, and then playing a. Yeah, a, a team that might be favorites, one of the favorites mm-hmm. to to end up in a Stanley Cup final in in Carolina, and good on the Leafs. It could have been ugly early, especially with the odd man rushes, mm. but they hung in there and they gave themselves at least a chance against a, a very good hockey club. Yeah. So, I, I think if if there's one thing that the the Leafs can take out of this weekend is that in the playoffs, you get off to a bad start, you want to give up half a dozen odd man rushes, you don't you don't get the chance to hang in there. You don't get the chance to save the game off of bad starts when you're not ready against a very good hockey club. And that file that away because it's coming back in the first round. Yeah. They yeah, they they got away with last night. Um you know, Carolina probably should have put them away. They weren't very sharp on a lot of those rushes and you know the you have the Leaf D some credit there, but um, yeah, a few too many looks against. But the fact that they hung around there against a good team and still were in it at the end of the game, you know, a, a pretty good weekend. Yeah. You say Edmonton, Carolina this weekend back-to-back, you, you wouldn't have expected yeah. four yeah. points out of that. Listen, they, they, Carolina's got a $7 million uh, third-pair defenseman in Orloff. Yeah. You know? And Ch- Chatfield, remember that name, UFA, guys? Yeah. Jalen Chatfield, because no one really talks about this guy, and I think he's sneaky good mm-hmm. as a right-handed d could look good in blue and white all their next year yeah i would like that they're just rangy defensemen like think of slavin burns is huge yeah like Pesci's just big. yeah long arms they're yeah. just getting in, in in passing lanes did you guys want to talk about the, how the, the power player penalty killed you guys want to talk about special teams again do you guys want keith on the canes or on the game yes He's, he was very sour last was he? Night. so get ready for some short clips okay so, well let's let's do them both then uh, let's start the overview of the canes game all right show me what you think the difference was here today puck went in off our skating into our net oh thanks man <laughs> grumpy all right that was the difference in the overview let's hear his thoughts on the canes clip seven Playing against one of the best defensive teams in the league, they're going to make it hard on you. We had, we had more than enough chances to score, well, more than one tonight. Okay. Okay, Sheldon. Yep. <laughs> He's a little tired, too. He was. Back to back. <laughs> Realistically, you probably don't sleep much as a coach. After that Edmonton game, you cut video on the flight down there, you go to bed at whatever. Listen, two I don't want to, like, I'm not 
building in any excuses or not, you know, you lost the game, you lost the game. But like, th- those are hard at this time of the year to mm-hmm. get on a plane after a very physical, emotional game against the Oilers. Mm-hmm. You get in one thirty. I don't know. Sometimes you don't fall asleep. You know, you wake up and like, that, that start really had a feel of guys weren't just going right not, away. Not feeling it. The the glutes weren't firing. They weren't firing. No. And they did it they found their legs yeah. in the second. But to your point, it was a lot of individual stuff. Like, you know, it didn't seem not as much passing of the puck. You saw Willie going yeah. trying to do his own thing a number of times. You saw Willie's got a it's gonna get tighter for Willie and the things that kind of worked earlier in the season might not. He's just for me. It's not that you want to take that creativity away from him because he's such a special player when it comes to coming through the neutral zone or pulling a 90-degree angle cut into the middle or whatever. But, man, he's got to be really careful from here on in. Well, I mean, after he turned that one over, was it against Boston high in the zone, he turned it over two or three more times in the ensuing three or four games. And then even last night, he, you know, he cut through his own end as the last man back. And it worked. It was a good play. But he just has no risk meter at all. The like, conscience isn't there. No, he's no just conscience. like, this is, I am 51% likely to do this. Don't yeah. care what happens if I don't because it's more likely to succeed than not. And he goes for it. So a lot of text on the text line about TJ Brody. Brody people back in. really want to talk about TJ Brody. Yeah. It yeah. seems to be, I would say, the dominant uh, topic on the text line. We haven't got oh. to it yet. T.J. Brody. Do we want to start with Sheldon Keith? Is he going to say anything? It's a quick one. Yeah, right. let's, let's Give us number go. nine. What'd you make of how T.J. played in his first game back here? He was fine. <laughs> oh, my God. He really didn't Derek, say anything. Can we please save that? Don't he have was fine. anything nice to say. Don't say <laughs> can we get that one more time, Derek? much at all. He was fine. Fine. Do you feel I any differently? would have left him out. Me too. One more. You know, I didn't agree with you, and then I put some thought into it, and I now agree with you. It's not really a weekend off if you got to travel and then play anyway. It's it's not a missing start where you, you don't have uh, two weeks to kind of still yeah. get there. Or ben three Wah's weeks. Ben has been so good, too. Month. Yeah, you know, Ben was such an emotional... If, if we're talking about the last week of the season, and you're like, I got to get this guy going because we can't win without him. Yeah. I'll understand that. Yeah. But 12 games to go after last night could have easily just said one more to think about it. Yeah. Give Are you the whole weekend. And I like Ben was Saturday night. I know a couple of hiccups there, but man, oh man, that guy's just he gives plays everything with his heart. He plays with his heart, but he can skate a puck up. He can get it in deep, and he hammered a few Oilers along the wall. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. got some emotion to his game. Brody has no emotion to his game. And like pulling him out of the lineup. Yeah, you've mentioned like they can't win without Brody. Like, are we but sure? Maybe that, are we sure that statement's true? No, I, I you know, I, Listen, I, it's gotten to a point here where I know Tree doesn't love him. Certainly didn't. Like, God, I feel bad. I didn't miss him a whole lot. Nope. Uh, he only played 17 minutes against Carolina. It's his lowest of the been, year. We've been pretty it's positive fine. up until now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but. Which frees us up. <laughs> now to do our favorite thing. <laughs> but there's a sense that I can feel with Sheldon or Brendan Shanahan or Brad Tree Living, that I like our chances better if we can get the old TJ Brody back. Yeah, they okay? keep hammering away. Because he's still a notch up above skill level than what I perceive is a bunch of five, sixes, and sevens. I agree. I see it. Okay? So I get that part. And love Joel Edmondson, but he also happened to play the most minutes he's played all year. Could not play a game like Saturday night at all for the Washington Capitals who are perceived as a much worse team than the Leafs. Uh, although they're now like the hottest team in the league and Ovi oh, can't stop scoring, but that's a point uh, of the national hour. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like, can, can Joel now be a 
22 minute no guy and no. and and hammer the other team's best players every night no can McCabe we talked about availability with Edmondson he's a guy who gets hurt yeah. can can McCabe be Saturday night's guy every other night yes he can yep okay I'm not sure about that still yeah. I thought he was a little tired last night as as we just said yeah for obvious reasons but sometimes when that happens I see a lot of pucks go up the middle of the ice that shouldn't well, go up the middle he, of the he ice. He made ter- terrible puck decisions yesterday. Well, that happens when you're a little tired yeah, or a little weary. Definitely. So that's where TJ Brody, when he's good or at the top of his game, can alleviate some of that. Mm-hmm. And that's what they want to try to get back. That's, I think, well said. You know, can you find that version of the guy who's good at defending the blue line and puck retrievals? Keep them out of our zone. Get us back going the other way is something he has historically done well uh, this year. Not the case. Oh, okay. I was going to say. The, historically. And he just hasn't. So I think he's going to play in the playoffs, clearly. I think but he's I, a, yeah, start. But I don't think he should be immune from the press box. Mm-hmm. Like, I really do feel that there's going to be a time where he need to mix him out. Like, he needs to kind of be given a bit of a rest here and there. And I feel bad for him. He's get immediate minus one last night on, McC- is for sure. on McCabe right. trying to make and, a- and shaking his head right yeah but like what I, why does he wear any of that he made a perfectly fine pass behind the net to his d partner who then in tried to between the legs back pass net into the slot it's like Carolina. that wasn't the smartest play but anyways power play mm. I'm, mm. I'm almost back to Morgan than the lily pad yeah me too said the same thing last night on lee stock i it's i actually like that it's terrible right now you know it never stays great for too long i i just want it to be (laughs) your pen just went for a ride i know you are (laughs) banking on it being hot at the right time that's what i'm saying oh gosh well listen no one's hot for you know seven months of a regular season they were at the best february in the nhl by miles but it's not looking like I don't, it, I I'd be it'd be great if they to your point if if it looked great but it's just not going in so you wait for that in the playoffs. We do well, not agree. You know what, Kip? I think there's a couple there's places they really about miss Mitch Marner, and one of the biggest is entering the zone on the power play. Like he makes a couple of moves and pulls up. Well, they and, do that drop back to him. Yeah, and he gets it in. It feels like his. They rate, get it set it, up so yeah. often, and I think as Leaf fans, you take it for granted. How often Mitch Marner and, and Austin get it set up without Marner? To me, that they're not getting set up. And to me, I don't see them with a ton of ozone time to even evaluate what Lilligren does for two reasons. They don't get it set up, and Lilligren takes one timers before everyone's set up, mm. and then they don't rec- win the puck recovery. When, when push comes to shove, boys, when Marner's back and they're heading into the playoffs, it's going to be Marner and Riley. And Tavares on the top unit, which like, is fine. The same one that you went back yeah. to, that you that you you changed with Bertuzzi, yeah. and now he's now back to where he was prior to. Yeah, they got him going. The change, yeah, they got him going. And you put him back, yeah. and now you're just ready to put him back to yes. where before. Go back to the place where you weren't successful. Well, I think to me, I think it was like a defibrillator, or you know, like give him a. <laughs> Well, jump start. And okay, you remember that? You, your heart's beating again? Okay, go back and be alive. Like, if he goes back and dies again, yeah. maybe you got to do it again. Well, I'm but. just at such a loss for what they do. Like, I'm at the point with Borny where I'm just like, put the normal guys out there and hope the hell it gets hot. Like, guys, get they, a they couple were, bounces. They were 22% and... percent against Tampa or whatever it was in the series they won last year. It's not inconceivable that they those guys can do that, you know? But okay, maybe. let's go to Sheldon <laughs> Keith on the power play, Sammy, and then we'll get your thoughts. Uh-oh. After Sheldon. Playing against one of the league's <laughs> best penalty kills, they make it hard on you. We had some chances and uh, didn't go in for us, but they don't give you much. So can you play uh, clip seven for us again, Derek, well, on the Canes? Playing against one of the best defensive teams in the league, they're going to make it hard on you. We had, we had more than enough chances to score, well, more than one tonight. And then the clip on the power play, please. Playing again. against one of the league's best penalty kills, they make it hard on you. Some chances. <laughs> Are those different clips? Yes. No, they're not. They're yeah, the they're exact different, same ones. Different clips. Oh my god! <laughs> Did he have a dinner or something to get to? Or... Pull the string. He only had six quotes ready to go. There's for a the snake year. in my boots. <laughs> <laughs> he. Uh... 
<laughs> okay, we're going to play them same time. Both clips. Oh. Same time. Well, that's talent. Are we doing Fair. that? Yeah, we're going to try. Oh, my God. Oh. Puck went in off our skating. Oh, no, 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 no. We all screwed up. Derek got too, <laughs> Derek got too horned up. Carolina, Nice effort, though. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate Horrible expectation. Oh. We had some chances. We had more than enough chances to score, well, more than one tonight. Oh, wow. That's not bad. Almost lined up. Wow. Good comeback. Carolina, 85.3% uh, penalty kill on the year is second best in the entire NHL. Um, so he's not wrong. It's a good PK. They got good D. They got good forwards that work hard. So, Yeah. Win a lot of battles. Leafs forwards don't win a lot of battles in the penalty kill. Who's supposed to be their killer? I don't know. Jake work. Gensel's got quite the record, eh, since coming over. And was it, what is it? I don't know. 15 goals for and none against on the ice. Yeah, he's been on the ice for 15 for and none against. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's good 15, ROI for 15 Carolina. 15 for, none against. That's his time in Carolina. So Seems like you probably should have got a first-round pick for that kind of guy. I think, uh, well, they did. I think shut well, they, they, well, they might go to the finals. So <laughs> yeah. Joseph Wall shutting down the, the penalty shot. Yeah. I think was a huge boost too for him personally. Dude, there was three or four times in that game where we said, if they come back, remember that save. You know, mm -hmm. where he made those ones yeah. that kind of kept them hanging around. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Penalty shot so, was one of them. We we assume that Samsonov's okay. How are you for, for Joseph Wall now starting how many games of a dozen here, Sammy? I got to tell you, I'm going wall, wall this week. Wall to wall, wall? Wall, wall, Saturday night, Sammy. Wall to wall. Yeah. Really? He looked awesome. And you want to get one of these guys hot. That's the best goaltending performance there's been for a while. He looked awesome. Since Wal his last one? Tradesies. Just trade him off for no. me still. Go wall on Tuesday, wall on Thursday, Saturday night, Sammy. Two in a row. Wall to wall. Um, yeah, so who this week it's uh, they have Washington and who's the other game? Jersey week, first. Jersey. So the Leafs play... The Florida Panthers twice more this season. And they play the Tampa Bay Lightning twice more this yeah. season. But those last two aren't going to mean anything. Wow, what if they do? They well, could, yeah, we they said could that, mean something either way, pal. Yeah, we said that last year, and then the Leafs had, like, a absolute gong show against the Lightning. Remember really? it was, like, the brawl game where, right. where Stamkos and Matthews fought? Like, it was crazy. That was not the playoffs? No, that was uh, Elliot before. Friedman last night talked about what a win could do for the Leafs yeah. and a Florida loss to Philadelphia, but and that didn't happen. Happened. So, yeah. do you... Do you now look at the standings and go without that that switch last night of wins that they are destined for one of two teams? You know, I don't know that mm. they're fully destined. I mean, you got the Lightning that are behind them by four points, so I'm not, and they play them twice. You know, a couple of games in hand on Boston. Like, yeah, they're probably not catching anyone, and they might get caught. <laughs> they might just end up playing the Panthers even if they drop out. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Finish, yeah, wild card one and get... The Panthers. Still, yeah, like, uh, it's tight, but I don't know. I, I it doesn't matter to me. There's just gonna be they're an underdog against literally anyone. So whatever. No, no, not good. Okay, buddy. And we are back to square one in the uh, goaltender controversy. If it was day one of the season, going into game one, have we? Do you feel any different than game one of the season about who should be their playoff starter? Yeah. Who did you feel then? And who do you feel wall, now? Wall. That's not different at all. That's the same. Oh, do I do? Oh, okay. Well, I screwed up the question. <laughs> I misunderstood. I think they go with the calm one. <laughs> the one that looks calmer. Yeah, that's the wall then. Okay. Our thanks to nobody who joined us. <laughs> thanks to nobody. In this hour. It was all JB and Sammy. I was just along for the ride. In the next hour, we're going to welcome in Luke Gazdick, who is fresh off his hockey night in Canada. Debut. Debut, indeed. Yeah, that was fun for him. We'll get his thoughts on that, the Oilers, and so much more as we continue Real Kipper and Born after these words. We're going national on the Real Kipper and Born show. Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee. We are live on Sportsnet, Sportsnet 650 in Vancouver and Sportsnet 960 in Calgary. This hour, Real Kipper and Born brought to you by Bet365. And welcome in Luke Gastic in a few minutes. Catch up on the latest this weekend. Get his thoughts on the Edmonton Oilers. I thought he did a great job Saturday night filling in for yes. Kelly Rudy. He's awesome. Who's getting well rested for the Stanley Cup playoffs, which are, I don't know, maybe just 
four weeks. These guys play off like, well, you did it forever. I did it, yeah. It's like two months of being sequestered and just like, you know, hockey every night. The one thing that uh, you know, was an advantage for Elliot and I and even Ron was we got to at least go home. You know, a guy like Kelly Rudy is like yeah. locked in. Flies here, stays here. BXF flies here, stays here. You can here. only love your reward points so much at the hotel. <laughs> How many they have? I My mean, they God. come in handy when you put that vacation finally together. Yeah. But outside of that, it's a lot. It's a lot to ask. So taking a night off, Luke filled in very uh, admirably, Co- I thought. A couple big games tonight. Uh, first Kings in uh, Vancouver, which we have uh, Monday Night Hockey tonight. Beautiful. And then the Vegas Golden Knights and the St. Louis Blues, which all of a sudden is a massive game at the bottom of the Western Conference. They can drive a stake in the heart of the Blues. They would end the Blues with a win tonight. And I think they will. You do, do you? I do. We can talk about that later. End game time. Oh. So we'll get, we'll, I'm going to ask Luke about this, but I just want to get your early thoughts on Toronto and Edmonton, which was a signature game Saturday night. I, I, I know what Vegas did, you know, to a guy like... Uh, Dry sidle, especially Petrangelo with the slash. But not very often you see McDavid and Dry sidle during the regular season get as targeted, in my opinion, as I saw them Saturday night. Yeah. Were you surprised? Yeah. I was surprised because I've watched the Leafs for, I don't know, how 10 years now, mm. covering it for Sportsnet and haven't seen them ever do that really. So that was. Something different, Edmondson, a little bit of an on-the-edge, dirty at times Mm -hmm. type of player. And Dreisaitl, you know, the stakes were high, right? It's a big hockey night in Canada game, and he's an emotional guy and managed to get under his skin pretty good. So, um, yeah, that was a unique unique moment for for the Leafs. Okay, let's welcome in one of the busiest men in broadcasting, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Luke Gazdick, former National Hockey Leaguer and now star of Hockey Night in Canada. Luke, what's going on, bud? Oh, thanks, Kipper. It's kind words. Uh, not much. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? We're good. So, I, like someone that's lived that on a few occasions, that Saturday, it's uh, it's a different feel. Like then preparing for a game during midweek. Tell us about your Saturday on uh, on an iconic show. Uh, it was good. Honestly, it was a really fun experience. Uh, I got the call earlier in the week, so I got to, you know, have some time to prepare for it. But, you know, I agree with you when you said that, like I I've been in there now for some big Monday night hockey games and I've done leaf games on Wednesday night hockey, but you know, it was just different. It just felt different walking in there on Saturday. And, um, obviously, crew's bigger and there's tons of people around and you know once i got on the desk and we we were running through the show with ron and jen and and kevin um i was getting a little nervous i'm not gonna lie uh <laughs> walking through some segments but it was such a great experience everyone um including you know production and everyone in the control room made it uh i don't want to say easy but definitely made it easier for me uh and the fact that it was leaf soilers was was awesome uh obviously grew up here cheering for the Leafs and then spent the majority of my NHL career with the Oilers and follow them pretty closely now. So it was just a great game for me to walk into. And anything, uh, you know, from that game catch you off guard? I mean, geez, that was probably now not how most people saw the game unfolding. What was your greater takeaway from uh, a Leafs Oilers game where the Leafs found themselves up five going into the third period? Well, I did catch a second of what Kip said. And in the first intermission, um, that's what we focused on or what I focused on was the physicality on their top guys. It was something you couldn't ignore. I think we circled back to it in the second period as well because there was a scrum uh, on the power play, on the Oilers' power play, where they went to four-on-four with Dreisaitl and uh, Edmondson going into the box. But I just... From watching Oiler games, you rarely see their top guys get targeted like that on a shift-to-shift basis. And the fact that it was the Leafs, too, which is a team that doesn't necessarily play that way all the time. And it was from the first shift. It was from the get-go. Like Morgan Riley's first shift of the game, he had a box out on Connor, and then he tried to get to the net, and he gave him a couple cross-checks. And then Edmondson drove him into the boards on the second shift. And I was like... Oh man, like they're 
they're making this an MO of their game tonight to go after these guys. Um, if On the Oilers' side, I mean, if you're an Oilers fan, I was pretty disappointed how they came out. There's 11 guys from Southern Ontario on their team. Uh, they lead the NHL in that category. And I just know for me, coming home was, a, was always a special game. Uh, friends and family are here. Can be distracting, but it's, it's only once a year out of conference. So I was a little disappointed with the Oilers' effort on that side. You can't just wait till it's five rip to get your power play going and, you know, mount a comeback. But I was impressed with the least physicality and uh, the way they drove the play. We're talking to Luke Gastic, former NHLer, now Sportsnet hockey analyst. Let's add Hockey Night in Canada to that list as well. So we saw an exchange on the bench between Dreisaitl and Evander Kane, and I think you guys mentioned maybe they were talking about maybe a power play or a situation on the ice. But could it have been, Luke, and I'm not privileged to what they shared, but could it have been, hey, Evander, I'm getting my ass run left, right, and center. So is Connor. Can somebody maybe go after a, a Matthews or a, a, a Nylander in this situation? And sure enough, 24 hours later, Evander's uh, a healthy scratch. But who's who's in that lineup that can can answer uh, the bell for for the licks that those guys took? And is that something that Oiler fans need to be concerned about when it matters most in the playoffs? See, that's why I love you, Kip. I think that's a pr pretty good overlook at that situation. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly what they said, but um, when you're getting tossed around like that, you need some pushback. And that's one of the things that Kevin said in the studio on Saturday was like, where's Nursey and where's Sammy Carrick and where's Evander Kane to, to have a little bit of pushback um, from the Leafs here. And anyone that knows Leon or played with him um, like I did knows how emotional he is and I understand the body language and the mannerisms throughout the course of the year don't look great from time to time but I love his energy I love his emotion he just you know when you get into situations like that he's very vocal with no filter like he will he will say exactly what's on his mind and Evander can be that way as well and I think that's just a situation where your team's getting pumped uh, on the scoreboard and on the ice and something obviously happened and it boiled over and listen like everyone had different opinions and kind of takes on how it looked i didn't love the way it looked uh when you see two guys going at it like that um i would have hoped that they went into the room and you know maybe at least uh snuff that out a little bit um and not let it carry over into the third but it's clear that, you know, there's there's something there was something wrong there. Um, but I, I think that's that's Leon, you know, that's the way he leads and uh obviously a very emotional guy. So Kane gets healthy scratched the next night and the team has a disappointing outcome against Ottawa. I guess I'll focus on Kane there though. What, kind of what's happening with his season here, really struggling to get it going and a guy who they need to be and can be a really important contributor for them, particularly when it comes to playoff hockey. Yeah, you said it. Like, if they want to have any success down the line here, he's a huge part. He's going to be a huge part of that, and they need more from him. That's 16 now, I believe, without a goal. And if you're not going to score, you got to create physically, uh, get a little dirty. And I just don't feel like that part of the game has been there either. Um, not sure exactly what's happening last night. You know, I, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt here and say that maybe um, he's got a nagging injury. Maybe he's playing through something. But Chris Knobloch's tried him up and down the lineup. He's tried him with Connor. He's tried him with Adam Henrique. He's tried him with Ryan Nugent Hopkins, and nothing is really seeming to work here. There was a couple games earlier in the season where he even threw him down on the fourth line, and that was no bueno for 91. He did not like that at all. Uh, but he's just such a big part of their team. Like, he brings that different dimension for their offense uh, as big as he is and as tough as he can be like the, to get out of the if you want to say Pacific or the Western Conference uh, in in a macro view um, he's got to be a big part of it and it, it's something they're just really lacking right now look uh, Saturday night and we, we all know the Oilers didn't get the start that they wanted but still very much in the hockey game down to nothing 
midway through the second period. And then the third goal where Evan Bouchard's going to retrieve a puck with Austin Matthews has, has the positioning to get the puck in first and actually hops to his left to get out of the way so Austin can go and get the puck that ended up being the third goal in the hockey game. And listen, Evan Bouchard is a hell of a talent. We know that. But that was pushing snow like I've not seen in a very long time. And I'm just wondering if if Oiler fans see that in the playoffs, like how can this team win? No, and I'll agree with you. Honestly, he has come a long way since the start of the year, let's call it. It was some of the worst hockey I'd seen him play earlier in the season. And I feel like when Paul got hired, when Paul Coffey got hired, that really sparked something. And his game started to come in leaps and bounds. And it's just little instances like that. Call them brain farts, whatever you want, little mental lapses that drive coaches and for that matter you're right viewers fans nuts right like that is a pivotal moment in a hockey game where you just want to see him make contact you just want to see him at least absorb some physicality or do the old school stick on puck and and drive him through the boards there and it's things with boosh like that that i think still frustrate people a lot in watching his game uh because he has come a long way He's got a great stick. Um, he he obviously has the offensive ability, but it's just times like that where I wish he could just play a little more physical and just use his body a little more. And that one was was pretty obvious in the sense of what he should have done. But man, if they line up against you know a Vegas or even I watched LA play uh, and we're covering them tonight. They're in Van tonight. That's not going to work against either of those teams mm-hmm. uh, and a- anyone in the Western Conference for that matter. So those are things that I would hope that Paul Coffey, uh, assistant coach Mark Stewart, who definitely would not have made a play like that, um, would would have a chat with him and ho- hope to be better. He can shoot a puck, though. Oh, my God. I mean, yeah, like he's any ever. Yeah, he's a great offensive he player. He is. You know, they're at a point now where Vegas is a couple points behind L.A. They may end up facing Vegas, uh, as you mentioned. But it's just, it's tough to not see the Ed, uh, the Edmonton Oilers as, I don't know, are they the best team in the Pacific round? Vancouver may win the President's Trophy this year, but I just feel like they've come so far, and I don't want to dwell too much on the Saturday night game because this, the, you know, post-deadline Oilers have been very good. The post knoblock Oilers have been very good. Has your opinion of where they're at changed now going into the playoffs from, I guess, you know, pre-deadline? Where do you have them at in terms of real cup contenders? You know what, JB? Um, It's funny. I don't want to give you too much of the show tonight, but we have a little segment called Take Your Pick. Yeah. And uh, our producer, David Azuma, said, who's the best team in the Pacific? And I'm thinking, how do I say Edmonton after this weekend? Yeah. With the position that Vancouver's in and how well they've played on a consistent basis. Like, Vancouver loses their top guy in Thatcher Demko, and Casey DeSmith has stepped in and played incredibly well for them. They're getting efforts from guys like Nils Hoaglander and Connor Garland all over the score sheet, the years that JT Miller and Quinn Hughes are having, like they're a treat to watch. And I, I, I see how people are not giving them a ton of credit for being a Stanley cup contender here, but I think maybe we're 70 games in now, maybe we should, but uh, I, I felt much better about the Oilers before this weekend. And I know two games, you shouldn't live or die by two games. It just shows me that they obviously still have, some flaws like they still have some problems every team does um but all in all this is probably one of the more confident years i know they ended the season really really strong last year but i'm still confident in what they have it starts and ends with me and net uh, i've said that since day one mm-hmm. if Stuart skinner can play some good hockey and get hot and go on a run there's no telling what this team can accomplish uh but it's just mental lapses like that and slow starts which has been this huge you know character that they've started to identify with 
uh, where it's let's just get better and better as the game goes on. Like their third period goal differential is second best in the league. They just get better and better, but it's like we need some better starts here. So it's concerning a little bit that they're still fighting with a couple things like this this late in the season. But when they're clicking, honestly, when they are rolling and the four lines are going and 97 and 29 are at the top of their game, there aren't too many better teams in hockey than the Edmonton Oilers. They've got 13 games to go, and it wasn't a good weekend for Skinner or Pickard uh, against Ottawa. But if if there is going to be a, a a hiccup or just a pullback a little bit, may, maybe this is a, a decent time with 13 games to go because they, they have been so good for the last 50-odd games. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's that's like it's such a small sample size for me what happened this weekend yeah. and it was largely in part to to their goaltending and i hate blaming it on them but i mean calvin pickard five goals on 16 shots yesterday and corpus Allo on the other side plays outstanding you know elliot and jeff talked about it on their pod today and i don't want to stir too many things up but Jackie Campbell's played great in Bakersfield. Oh. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if at some point you see him again in an Euler uniform. Oh, um, wow. I, wow. I don't, know, I don't know about that, but he's played outstanding. Well, in I, minors. I threw out Matt and, Murray, so we're even yeah, for the Leafs. Yeah. I mean, I'm not the coach, I'm not the GM, but uh, he's played some really good hockey down there, and uh, you just, you never know. He's still under contract for three more years after this, right? So, uh, yeah. well, we'll see. They would like him to find it, no doubt about it. Um, on the Leafs side of things, watching that game, I know you follow along pretty closely, too. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on where they have come? You know, adding some physical guys at the deadline uh, to the back end with Labushkin and Edmondson, but also just getting more support from Domi and Bertuzzi and, you know, McMahon and Holmberg. Are you a believer now that the Leafs could find their way through a playoff round? Dare okay, I say such a thing? This Bobby McMahon is unreal. Like, <laughs> I have just loved him. Five million start, a year. <laughs> from start to finish, this kid has been just such a treat for me for the Leafs. Like, plays physical. Um, obviously has a nice goal-scoring touch. I have a soft spot for anybody that's played in the East Coast Hockey League. Thank you. Because it is truly an absolute jungle down there. I turned pro in Boise, Idaho, and then I got sent down my first year. And just hey, remember, did we play thinking, together or, or against each other? What year were you in Boise? Boise for me would have been 2009. Yeah, I, I think I was there. I think I was wow. there earlier in the season. I may have missed you by a month. Are you gonna? Are you guys Sorry. gonna? Yeah. Sorry. Discover <laughs> we'll you guys are brothers we'll now. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, and I asked him after the game when we interviewed him just about getting there, and he talked about playing in Wichita and playing in Newfoundland. Um, and then he has a chirp for Bieksa, and we asked him after, and Kev's never talked to him, never met him. He just came from this <laughs> game. That was total left, left field, field for me. Yeah. <laughs> It was just, I've I've really, really liked him. And yeah, same. honestly, I don't know if there's, listen, there's no, I don't know, this correlation between Mitch being out. I'm not saying anything about the fact that he's out or that's why, but other guys have had to step up. And a lot of credit for Joel Edmondson too. He's been a guy who, especially Saturday night, we're sitting there going, mark that Edmondson clip, you know, mark that Edmondson stick, mm -hmm. mark that Edmondson hit. Um, and I think when he got traded here, it wasn't, completely well received by Toronto and it was just like why are we picking up this guy he's a little older um but I, I think he's a great great addition to their back end in terms of adding a, a you know a little bit of physicality and a little bit of heart absolutely just for the record Luke and I both scored one goal for the Idaho Steelheads in 2000 I'm looking at the uh you had 14 <laughs> pims in two games I had 21 pims in 11 games so I fought a couple times there too. <laughs> a lot of tripping yeah, or what? So did I. Yeah. I had eight tripping penalties. <laughs> Luke, were you one of many that uh, watched uh, Samsonov come off the ice going, is this season over? Well, yeah. Anytime you see someone that needs to, you know, pretty much be carried off the ice like that, um, we were all kind of silent 
too. And I was, I remember I was thinking um, about the long term. Like my man, my mind went straight to the long term. But we, I looked the play before. We were trying to see if he got hit with a shot high or if he stretched out too far. I think that was the big, um, the big thing that people were looking at was that his right leg missed the post. So did he just kind of tweak his groin a little bit? But. Uh, you try not to think of the worst in that situation because, uh, honestly, he was outstanding. I know that he gave up three goals in the third, but it could have been a lot more than that in the first two periods. He played some really good hockey and has played some really good hockey as of late for this Buds team. Awesome stuff, Luke. We really appreciate your time. I know it's been busy, and you're right back at it tonight, correct? Yes, sir. We got uh, L.A. at Vancouver, Monday Night Hockey, uh, 8.30 pregame. There you Beautiful. go. Well, keep up the great work, man, okay? We love watching you. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. All right. A new lucky Luke. Yes. For Sportsnet. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, yeah, the McMahon comment was uh, was hilarious to Bieksa because I was just like, Did they, are they buddies? Did they go way back? But just a random a random dig to Bieksa. It was fun. God, a lot of players play on – an ECHL team over here, right? You're looking at that roster. Oh, my God. There's so many guys. I, it is baffling. For the record, I had a torn MCL and barely hobbled around for a few games. But okay, I, just for the record, in my era, man, yeah. you'd almost quit before going to play in the East Coast. Yeah, for sure. Like, it was nutso. Yeah. Like, scary. Scary. Yeah. Like, you're going down there to... Die. Die. Survive. Yeah. Your hockey career is going to die there. Yeah. Now, much different. Developmental, right? You only run 10 forwards because they want guys to develop. It's meant to yes. be you play all the time. It's actually insane because there's three fights I, and all I of a sudden you're like. I guess that's how Terry Ryan ends up playing. Yeah. Exactly. We're going we're gonna to hear like a lot of guys playing in the NHL from this league. Now. Yeah. It's funny. It won't my, be as uncommon as my era. My dad, at the start of his second year, got sent down to, I think it was the IHL maybe then, was, mm -hmm. was that below the NHL at the time, yep. and said that he basically learned to fight there because it was such a circus and you had to learn to stand up for yourself. Particularly, he had played in the NHL, he's yep. six foot four. And it was all the of a sudden, CHL he got sent to. My the, dad? The Fort Worth Texans. Okay, CHL at the time, yeah. Yeah, 73 points in 62 games. And 80 pims. So he went. Yeah, yeah he there you had go. a couple tillies. There you go. But yes, now it is not so much just a pure fight fest, which is nice. Good. Yeah. Same with the, I mean, the AHL too. Like the AHL was a league that was, you know, you think of those guys that were running around down there, even, you know, in the early 2000s. Yeah. Like Marasty yeah. and all those Go guys. Look at my Hershey Bear team. I will. With Craig Berube and yeah. Jeff Chikrin, Don Knockbauer, Al. Wacko Hill. <laughs> it's like the intro at the start of Slash. I oh, remember Andre the Poodle Lassard. Yeah. These, there's some fights in these games. I'm just looking at the Pims on that team. Don Knockbauer. Oh, yeah. He, snack bar. Yeah. He had 174 Pims in 42 games. Oh, what a year. I felt what, with so the subsequent litigation. I, I felt so safe on that team, man. Yeah. Jeff Chickren had 210 Pims in 55 games. No goals, five assists. A lot of fun. Went to training awesome. camp with Psycho McMichael. Psycho. I can't even tell you the guy's first name. Just All I knew psycho. was Psycho McMichael. I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. What when, have I got myself I into? You, when I went uh, to play in the coast, my mom had some concerns because that was the, the reputation, right? That was, uh, but it certainly is much more development league now, even. Oh, and people love like the East Coast, like the attendance around there. Oh yeah, there's there's some really good cities. St. John's is a wonderful place. St. John's. Yeah. Um, my Fort Wayne. My uh, cousins who live in Florida, who I've mentioned before on the show, they used to love it when it was the Leafs. Farm team was the Orlando Solar Bears. Yeah. And those oh. games, those games are awesome, apparently. Buddy, like, I've always wanted to go. Solar never... Bears, Everblades, I think. Yeah. yeah. My division, Greenville Growl, my division, though, was I was playing in Idaho, yeah. and we played in Vegas, Salt Lake City, which is uh -huh. beautiful, Victoria, like, in a couple places in California, which are not nice cities, but warm weather. Yeah. I think it was an awesome division to play in if you're going to play in the yeah. coast. I'm sure that was good you for play you. In the East I'm sure that was good for you at that time. Yeah, it went great. Hardly any trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, game time, boys. Let her rip, Sammy. Uh, it's game time. Presented by Bet365. Visit the app for the latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary. At Bet365, must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. 
like I said, only two games on the schedule tonight. Uh, so I thought before I got into those games, I would check the futures and check the Stanley Cup favorites. Like I always start like doing at the start of the week. The Edmonton Oilers have no are no longer the favorite, which I think is pretty fair after the weekend oh, they had. A bad weekend. Well, pretty bad weekend, it boys. Pretty bad. Bad pretty, weekend. Pretty. Uh, okay, the, hold on. Okay. Who do you think's I mean, a favorite today? Small sample size uh, or bad weekend? Come on. No. Bad. Well, yeah, small sample, bad weekend. But I mean, they got pumped. In Toronto on Saturday night. It wasn't I mean, close for a lot of that game. Right. I know a lot of people, like, Puck didn't go in early for Edmonton, whatever. But it was 5 nothing going into the third. How about that play Henrique made at the blue line? That's one of the worst plays I've oh seen in the NHL. Oh, my God. He kicked it around like it was a yeah, that was bad. tennis ball or something. <laughs> oh my what was bad. What's going on there? Um, but then they blew it to Ottawa. Were they up 3-1 against yeah. Ottawa? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. And, so, and we just heard from Luke. Yeah, it was goaltending. Corpus Allo, okay. One of the worst seasons ever in Ottawa history mm -hmm. for a goaltender. Mm -hmm. And then you look like George Vesna last night. Go I figure. Know. I don't know. Yes, goalies, man. So who do you think the favorite is right now? Is it Carolina? It is not. Uh, the Rangers. Really? The God, Rangers are 7-1. to one. Hey, Listen, I love the Rangers for obvious reasons, mm -hmm. but I just don't see it. I see them in the mix. Mm-hmm. But they're tied with the are Colorado they Avalanche. Ready? Co favorites. Avalanche. Are they ready? Yeah. I think they are. I I I, I think You they, do, eh? I, I love their team. Like I really do. And first line is Kreider, Zabanajed, Roslovich. Yeah. Aaron Trocek, Lafreniere, Brodzinski, Wenberg, Capo. Panarin's having DC, a heck of a Goodrow, year. Rempe. Get out of here. I like that team. Rangers. I like that team. Every time I watch them, I like them. Although Lafreniere has come I a do very like long a way. Man, and uh, could you pull up the, the decor there? Yeah, right. Yeah. Keandre Miller, Braden Schneider, Eric Gustafson, Adam Fox, there's, Zach Jones, listen, Chad Rudolph. There, there, there's, still, there's still some development there with Ke uh, Keandre Miller. I love him, yeah. by oh, the way. I would speak. love to trade for him, but yeah. I think in two years, this guy's going to be fantastic, but there's still work yeah. in progress there. They do have Shesterkin. That helps. Um, so, and if you want to find where the Leafs are, they are now 16 to 1. So, to me, the Oilers being plus 750 and the Leafs being 16 plus 1600 is just insane. I love bet 365, but to me, it's you know like, that's, you know, those teams are so much closer. So than that. tough to get out of the West. You too, know what's safe? For sure. Ken Holland is that at home trade. Oh, mm. that at home. Like, Perfect. Think about them. the Leafs teams. were sniffing around at that time too. Think about it. Well, how the Leafs would have had a different set of McCabe instead. Well, that's what it would. That's what it was rumored. That's when yes. they made the McCabe trade. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but so. he is. He's he's next level stuff when it comes to doing so many great things for the Oilers. I forget I love who them. they were playing recently, but it was the most satisfying one timer goal of all time. It was Eckholm on oh, the three on yes. two tic tac kabam. Yeah, man, that looked fun Hated against hard. Nashville. I think. Whew. So speaking of the Nashville Predators, can I interest you? In the hottest team in the league, the Nashville Predators at 17 to 1 as Stanley Cup. Not a chance. Okay. Did you catch? You, they could be 170 to 1. Okay, bud. Better. All right. The Forsberg fight. Yeah, he got pumped. Philip Forsberg? Uh, yeah, you know what? Mo Sider Sides, filled him in. Sider's a big guy. What do you mean, and Mo he, Sider? He threw him. Yeah, he I did. Know. He threw him. But I'm telling you, for, you like for a, such a skilled player that you would never think would have that kind of anger to fight that was it Ford, a mad fight it was a mad fight yeah and forsberg did terrific did he win the fight no but was he yeah was he that guy that yeah. woke his whole teammates up to another level 100 well, percent. it's kind of like simone benoit fighting nick delorier earlier this year where he's yeah. like oh god like, okay, no no, no this is way it. worse <laughs> this is like not way worse fighting this is either. way extreme man yeah. like, um Forsberg's more Nylander than than. I'm just saying the mismatch. Benoit. Uh, anyways, uh, the last thing I have, I know I'm going to get Forney here tonight, but give me an underdog parlay tonight. Give me the Blues at plus one twenty five and the Kings at plus one ten for a plus three seventy two parlay. The two underdogs get it done. Or tonight. you could <laughs> save your money <laughs> bet Vegas plus the over. I just want chaos, so I'm rooting for the Blues.
I lo- I love my knights, yeah. but little little fun at the bottom of the uh, at the fun of the reverse jinx for your knights. Yeah, there we go. All right, that was game time presented by Bet Three Six Five. Visit the app for the latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet Three Six Five. Must be nineteen plus, Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Okay, let's take a quick break, and when we return. We'll get into some NHL news and notes, including the Washington Capitals. Is that the same team that lost to Toronto on the weekend? I don't know. I don't know what to make of that team. They are Jekyll and Hyde. Also, the uh, Penguins found the bobbleheads. Oh, they did. They negotiated their return. Oh, okay. They also found a loss up for Zip. Let's uh. get into that and more, <laughs> including Shane Doan's son making his debut for the Coyotes. Tuesday feel, night. How, I feel old. How do you guys feel? Oh, boy. Uh, buddy. Uh, we'll tell you how <laughs> old we feel. a rugby game every day. <laughs> when we return <laughs> to I'm Real Kipper sword. and Bourne. Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee, bringing it home on the Real Kipper and Bourne show. So, before the break, talk to little Washington Capitals. OV uh, was named first star uh, of the week. Scored in all four of his outings, leading the NHL with seven goals. Okay. He's going to break the record. Uh, I got news for you. And I don't want to hear those sounds coming out of your body okay, from here on in until the record. Okay, here we go. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Makes for good radio. Sorry. I, Look I, at me. You're not going to hear any comment other than this. It's the going me. to happen. Okay. Okay. That's did fine. anyone see the graph I tweeted out today? Oh yeah, I did. It's like, Can of you course remind he's me? the goat. Oh, he's the best goal scorer. He's the well, the does he have the most goals though? No, he does okay, not. not yet. Everyone scored when Gretzky plays. Yeah. The era adjusted goals thing, where like in the eighties when Gretzky was scoring all his goals, there was like thirty eight goals a game. And when Ovi has played, they're way way down here. The point just being, Ovi's goal scoring compared to his peers has been more impressive by a good distance mm. than Wayne. Good for and him. so, no, he doesn't have the most because some people aren't smart enough to take context into consideration. Oh, but... yeah, when he's stealing them off his teammate's stick. <laughs> Fair enough, Sam. That was embarrassing. It, you thought getting in Connor McMichael's he way. He literally McMichael put, shot shoot his stick. my stick. Uh, I, I can't stand They can't take that one away, can they? <laughs> Will the league dare? Uh, no. 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 It's I happening. Did, I, you know, I feel most people want to get this. He's score 30 this year. Most people want to get it. So, I, I feel like, you know... It, Whatever I see, people are happy that they're going to get to witness it. And I feel bad that literally every time it comes up, it truly disgusts me. And I don't want to keep hammering away on this. So, like, I don't even know what to do. I I hate it. Well, every I, I honestly check the box score for every cap game. <laughs> like, and then oh, I'm like, no. oh, and it's no. Just, you, you, <laughs> don't, again? you just don't want to see goals. Wayne Gretzky yeah, off I, I the want, mountain. I've said it a million times. I'll say it again. No politics, no nothing. I want the Canadian guy to have the most goals of all time, not the Russian guy who is like, that's the, the historic rival of Canadian hockey. Number one rival is, is Russia, USSR, whatever, looking back over the history. And they are our number one rival. I don't want a Russian guy to have the all-time goal scoring Let's record. Let's go. Sorry, I don't. I don't want it. God. And now you're like an idiot. And I've right. for five minutes. It's okay, God. grapes. It's God. okay. But it's no, fine. Not Maddie. I'm on okay. your team. We're Sorry. good. Washington, yes. 12 games to go. Two against Detroit, including tomorrow night. Mm. Whoa. They're right in it. Right in it. Is... Is that the season right there tomorrow night? You know what? I'd love for that to be the case, but they're just so close. Like, they're one point up. If Detroit wins, they're at 80 and 79 points. It's not enough to say one way or the other that it's the season, but it sure is a massive hockey game. Regulation wins the Capitals hold, too. That's a big tiebreaker. Boy, the Red Wings really blew this. By the way, look at regulation wins. The Leafs had, like, none. Remember we had that for a while? And they're four behind the Bruins now. Yeah, that was a big-time talking point for a long time. But, no, I, I can't help but look at those standings and say, what happened to the Red Wings? They were solidly in there. Yeah. Two wins for the Washington Capitals since getting throttled by the Toronto Maple Leafs and losing Tom Wilson for six games, who, by the way, will not appeal the mm-hmm. six-game suspension for the high stick. Mm-hmm. But, like, Carolina in a shootout. 
That was a crazy game. How is that the same seven, team that played six. the Leafs? Seven six, I know. And then shutting out Winnipeg <laughs> yesterday. I don't know the cap schedule too. I have to look twice. Yeah, well, Winnipeg's had a weird run. The Islanders beat Winnipeg on Saturday so thoroughly. Uh, it looked like they were playing, I don't know, the Sharks or something. The Islanders were up like 28-6 in shots at one point. So Winnipeg has just had a little blip here. I'm sure they're going to be fine, but it was a scary weekend if you're a Jets fan. Yeah. Um, but the Capitals schedule coming up. So after that Red Wings game, they played the Leafs on the Thursday. Um, we may talk to Carberry. We'll see. Yeah. We're still working on that. Um, but after that, they got the Bruins. They still got to play the Canes. They got the Lightning. They got the Bruins again. Like, they got some tough games ahead. So Detroit's still in it. Mm. And Carberry's just I, should be talked about a lot more, I think. Yeah, he is making proverbial chicken salad, <laughs> in my opinion. It's a good-looking chicken salad. Yes, it is. <laughs> and... Charlie Lindgren is still the guy. Yeah, that's always that's always the thing, right? With uh, you know, good coaching is it comes along with good goaltending, and Lind Lindgren's been been really good for them. So, from one topic that's our favorite news and notes to another one, uh, did you happen to catch any of uh, the Penguins and Avalanche? Did catch it? Yeah, I did. Mm. I did, mm -mm -mm. and it's kind of the honestly real microcosm for the Pittsburgh Penguins season where you have Sidney Crosby scoring potentially the most glorious tip goal I've ever seen. He's done that a few times. Yes. That one to me was the most extreme. Like he was below the goal line. It felt like, I don't know did how he got it up there. The far elbow. But, but did you see him save the play by yes. getting it back to the point? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, honest to God, I'm uh, watching he's, this he's going. He's working. As good as ever. And he's trying his best, but his best just ain't good enough, and they lose. And they are currently ahead of three teams in the East. Ottawa, Montreal, and Columbus. Just three Oh, there teams. we go again. Having the boards very nice. It uh, is. Whoever's decided to add this to our show. Yeah, what an thank, element. Thank you, Jimmy Willie. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it, bud. Yeah. Yeah. There, I, there you go. But... I don't know. You, you see Ottawa with a huge win last night. All they're doing is worsening their. Well, at this point, they're their, just their going pick. To free fall and the NBA team load manage anyone who can shoot it into the net. Start, <laughs> yeah. you know, what's the point at this point? But God, I just I can't help but just see these Sid moments and just be heartbroken again. As heartbroken as I am every time Ovi scores, I'm as heartbroken as I see Sid sitting on the bench with his head down. Like to me. The points that they're at with their teams right now, I just wish so bad that they were flipped. And this conversation will not go away here from here on end. Well, Sid, to me, needs to make a call. Like, I understand, see what happens this summer with Pittsburgh. Go into the year, see if there's... What do you need to see? Well, I'll tell you what you need to see. If you trade Eric Carlson and you, you know, add Brett Pesci and, you know, if you make three or four personnel changes and you feel do, you're a lot better... Did you buy it, like... Did you buy into Carlson, Ottawa? I don't know. Didn't Carlson say, oh, oh that's, that's all coming from... Classic Canada or Canada something. He was pissed off about Canada, yeah. I think Elliot started all that. He did. Well, it's not like Carlson's going to say, I've heard that. I sure hope that works out. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm looking forward to my return back Why to Ottawa. Why would Ottawa ever contemplate that? Give me, please, give me within the next Carlson, 30 seconds, right. give me shoot right. one good reason. Right? Is, she right? is that it's not a good enough reason? No. I think that you're just I don't know. There it'd be a, a classic Ottawa, think they're better than they are, make a trade to kind of think you're putting them over the top, get a star in there. Buddy, they need so, to have an aggressive summer though. This so, isn't it, but that's not the move. Was it wasn't so, it Mac that said this is the biggest summer of their franchise history? He did. So moving Carlson would help excite Sid? Is that what you're telling me? It would help excite Sid if it meant that they would sign other good players. Like, you don't think they're going to do anything this summer? You're talking like you think they're going to just go into next year like this. Yeah, I think they probably will. Well, then Sid needs to make the call if he wants to sit on the bench after blowing four goal leads for another three years of his career or if he wants to be in games that matter. See, I think that's more realistic than Kyle waving his magic wand. 
I listen. This is the Kyle Duba show. I can't do another Duba show. <laughs> so no, I, 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 oh, I, no we're not doing it. We're not going there. Okay. We're just saying that his hands are tied. Yeah, I'm just not sure what he can do. Like, I mean, you can trade Carlson, but you still have Malkin. How much does Malkin make? Six and change. I mean, you can't. Can you move that? Can Would you, move, you move that? Can you can move you that? Move, like, there's so. That's the thing. Emotionally. That's why taking over the Penguins was such an impossible job because you have to manage well, you get a seven year deal for you sure you but you have to but them. you have to manage the end of the most beloved maybe team in franchise history yeah. where gandy dufrane you have to crawl through 500 <laughs> yards you're of, the guy to that has to clean end on it. the other side yeah and is he in a big enough spot to be like hey sid we're trading gino we're trading latang like, I don't know. I don't if know. he asked him to do that, he might trade me. He may have got some goodwill when the Penguins got, they secured a tr the truckload of stolen oh, Yarmer yeah. Yager bobbleheads and planned to begin distributing their promotional items at the team's upcoming home game. The Penguins were notified last week that a special cargo recovery team negotiated the return of the stolen property to a secure warehouse located in Ontario, California. Okay. California, the bobblehead. I know nothing about this story. I've talked to no one about this story. <laughs> I call BS on the whole thing. Wow, that's a bold claim. I oh, know. the P organization is oh, saying. Yeah. yeah, it just it just reeks for me. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, you know, you, there, there was some at the time. It's the just Augur so goofy. Was... Oh, by the way, though, I did stipulate on the show last week, I believe nothing on the internet you any longer. Anything, period. Nothing, yeah. but, nothing. I mean... I do love the visual of the guy who took the truck being like, it's bobbleheads, man. It's bobbleheads. <laughs> there is a There's no gold in this truck. There's an epidemic of cargo theft in America. Apparently trains are getting robbed all the time. Like it's the Wild West. Yeah, for real. Train robbers. Train robbers. They're wow. back, man. Oh, Start back. If it was a publicity stunt, it was probably a good one. We've been talking about Yager bobbleheads, I guess, for two weeks. That's, that's something. <laughs> yeah. Great. They need to get people to go to their games. All right. If I know what I if don't care legit, about. Bobbleheads also. Then, I'll shut up now. Uh, good on them. Uh, you know, but what does diverting. The return mean? What did they Diverting exchange? from a very bad season. What did they exchange to get these back? Eric Carlson signed stick. <laughs> <laughs> really? What could it have been? I don't know if you guys have watched their home games recently, but like, crowd's not looking as hot as it used to. Oh, there's a real concern. No, no, no. There's and a if real you concern. You just bought a team, which Mario sold. Was it Fenway Sports Group that's involved? You can't love what's happening. Oh, no, no, no. There's a couple of people there told me that, like, the feeling is almost, is right up there with before they drafted Sid. Good boy. Oof. Well, that, that to me is why, you know, people always like, like to rag on the Southern teams, which I do myself. Sure. But I think it's a much more fickle thing than we give it credit Everywhere. for. Everywhere. Sure. Not just... Yeah, Winnipeg fans taking Winnipeg, a beating. Meanwhile, yeah. Pittsburgh fans haven't been. And but, like, and same with Florida and people like, oh, there's no one there. But it's like, there's a lot of markets that if the team stinks, people yeah. stop going. Like, there's only a few American ones that are super solid. A lot of places to spend here. All right, uh, Josh Doan will make yeah. his NHL debut after being uh, recalled from the AHL uh Coyotes Hockey Club. Very this cool. is, of course, the son of longtime captain Shane Doan. Uh, he's 22, selected in the second round back in 2021. Had a pretty good start to his pro career. Anything else we know about him? Yeah, he's leading the AHL rookies uh, with 26 goals. Wow. It's not easy to score in the American 26? League. 26 no, goals. Not. Um, you know, at it, it just 22 like years old. 24 one year. Did you? Yeah, and I thought it was like all the goals in the world back I, then. I had two. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, there you go. Yeah. But so cool together, for sure. I mean, we still don't have as many as Doan's kids. That's kid. right. We always forget that Doan does work for the Leafs, so. That's right, too. Yeah. All right. So it's a nice connection for him. I'm sure that's nice. a proud moment for Doan to watch that. Uh, you real. know what I wanted to ask you about, uh, like, and I'm not up to the, up to date on on this as much maybe as even you would be following this, but Elliot on Saturday night mentioned this whole situation with the NCAA CHL and what that could mean to the their agreement between the CHL and the NHL. I've talked to a few people uh, in the junior ranks, and they don't anticipate anything coming anything coming real soon here. 
Well, what Elliot said, he said the NCAA is actively considering removing all restrictions for CHL players to play in the NCAA after their CHL careers are done, which that would be a bomb. That's a okay, but way different thing what, than ever happened. That's it's, the opposite. No, it's, it's a major change for sure. I mean, it certainly affected what, how my choices wanna, were made. What, 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 what qualifies as someone's end of their age? CHL, well, you're, when you're not. What age? What 20, age? 21. You're an overager. You're an overager yeah. if you're born. But, but yeah. Why not 18? 18's the legal um But you age. can play in the CHL when you're currently 20. Yeah. And yeah, but if you wanted to leave when you're 19 oh, yeah, to you go play in the NCAA, sure. are you allowed to? Yeah, you'd be able to. But by this agreement, you could go. So at any time, you could leave you could the just, CHL? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which, to me, you know, really tears the junior system in Canada because... I chose junior A. I played in the WHL and had to consider, do I want to keep trying to make this? Like, it, yeah. you know, or... I just don't understand the term when your career's done. Or how did you phrase that again? Um, after their CHL careers are done. Yes, but but it, it's not when it's done. It's whenever they want to. Uh, yeah, I think that's... Right? You know, he's just saying, like, when you run out of runway to play junior, you could then go no, play but, in the NCAA. But, but, Listen, there, there are some CHL teams that don't want you to leave, but you could just pick up and leave anyways. Yeah. That wouldn't necessarily be a good thing. Well, I'll read the rest of Elliot's right? statement if it helps us. Yeah. Um, for example, if you get drafted from the CHL, NHL teams hold your rights for two years. If you get drafted out of the USA, USHL or NCAA, they hold your rights for four years. So all of that would have to be collectively bargained with the players. So there is still some clarification yes. meeting on okay. how that would work. Yeah. And also, I can't read. Yes, you can. It's all done. <laughs> Way better than me. Yeah. I, I just, you know, it's, a lot of CHL teams There's, would be fighting to not, like, because if you get, listen, you get sent to somewhere, you're playing in Ramouski, you're playing up north, or playing in Own Sound, or playing somewhere where you, you don't necessarily love it. If I were looking for the first train out of town. If I recall, right? if I recall, even in my era, when a player got drafted and developed and then, ended up playing in the NHL, the, the NHL teams would stroke a check to the junior teams. To, like, like develop their team. Yes, yeah. and it, was, it wasn't cheap. It was, like, in the tens of thousands of dollars. Oh, really? 30, 40, 50 grand. Hmm. Teams would get kickbacks for developing for the NHL. Hmm. So, I don't, know, I don't know how it stands today, Yeah. but if someone was to leave after two years and go finish... In the NCAA, do they still pay a portion of that? Yeah, do they I not don't know. pay it at all? And, and really weird to think of what would become of college hockey if you get a bunch of the best 20-year-olds out of you know the OHL yeah. decide to go become NCAA players and they have four years well, of eligibility playing until they're 24. They all, they all do it in the like U sport here, right? Like well, oftentimes they'll go play for yes, uh, go to call, the universities Canadian here. Universities, yeah, 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 yeah. So you'd... That, it would hurt that too, so they would have a big, oh, big a time. big say in that. Like it's a. Do you ever envision like a, a Memorial Cup becoming bigger in North America, including USHL, and like it's, does that open up? Mm. I, mean, I really I, think it would fundamentally change all the structure of mm. how developing and what leagues you play. Yeah, please don't trade. That's the hardest trophy USA, in sports to win. USHL's kind of made a name for itself in the last little while. It was never there was nothing there Good for league. me. Good league, yeah. You know, that, and that's, like, the, that's the equivalent of CHL hockey in the U.S. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the BCHL, which I played in for years, um, joined up with the, a, uh, a, the Alberta League or something like there. Everyone's making moves right now in junior hockey, so the landscape is shifting a little bit. Go check out the fees of these teams now. Mm -hmm. Tier 2, million, million and a half dollars. <laughs> What, for players that get drafted? No, no, to buy oh, a to franchise. Buy a franchise. Oh, to buy really? franchises. Yeah. These franchises are hot right now. Really? Yeah. Crazy. Okay, just like that, our two hours are up. Enjoy your night. And we're back tomorrow on The Real Kipper and Born Show.